Good evening. Welcome to Worship in the Word. I hope everybody had a happy 4th of July. Today is July 5th, so... I just want to come into the Lord's presence and let Him refresh us tonight. Down the mountain the river flows It brings refreshing wherever it goes Through the valleys and over the fields The river is rushing, the river is here The river of God sets our feet to dancing The river of God fills our hearts with cheer The river of God fills our mouth with laughter We rejoice for the river is here River of God, steaming with life, and all who touch it can be revived. And all who linger on this river shore will come back thirsty for more of the Lord. The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouth with laughter. We rejoice for the river is here. To the mountain we love to go To find the presence of the Lord Along the banks of the river we run We dance with laughter giving praise to the sun The river of God sets our feet to dancing The river of God fills our hearts with cheer The river of God fills our mouth with laughter We rejoice for the river is here For the river of God Sets our feet to dancing The river of God Fills our hearts with cheer The river of God Fills our mouth with laughter We rejoice for the river is here Thank you Lord For times of refreshing God Let your river flow God Praise you Lord I often just think about a scene I saw on a documentary one time where it showed, a, I don't remember where it was, but it was showing one of the deserts on the earth. And it was one of the kind of deserts where it's just sand and nothing else. But there was one small river that flowed through that, that desert and everywhere else it was just dry, nothing but sand, but along the banks of that river, there was all kinds of trees and animal life, and that's where all the local wildlife would come to hang out because that's where the river was. How many of us, me included, have times in our life where we just feel like we're dry? And all it takes is just a fresh wind of the Spirit it was referred to as a river a lot of times. This water separate, you know, water represents the, the Holy Spirit in the Bible a lot of times. In the story of Ezekiel, where God showed him the valley of dry bones, and he said, Son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel's answer was, Lord, only you know the answer to that. And then God commanded him to speak to them and they started coming together and, you know, coming alive. All it takes is the river of God. All it takes is a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. So I just want to invite the Lord into our presence tonight. It's not about me. It's not about Debbie. It's about, it's about Jesus and only he can give life. Jesus said, I've come to give life and life more abundantly. If you're dry tonight, just be honest. Say, God, I'm dry. Send your river. Yes, Lord. <laughs> the 
The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouth with laughter. We rejoice for the river is here. For the river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouth with laughter. We rejoice for the river is here. Isn't it interesting that after Jesus finished giving all his instructions to his disciples in Matthew 28 and in Mark 16, that he told them to wait for the Holy Spirit. He'd spent three years of ministry with them, showed them everything, even while he was there with them. In Matthew, I think, 9 and 10, he sent them out in pairs of two. He, they didn't just get to see him working. He showed them how to do the works that he did, and they came back rejoicing. After all that, in final instructions, he said, now go to Jerusalem and wait for the Spirit. Don't do anything else except pray and seek the Lord until you get that, because that's how important the Holy Spirit is. And the same Peter, who just weeks before had denied the Lord, saying, I never knew him, stood up in front of 3,000 people, or more, more than that, but 3,000 were saved, and boldly proclaimed that the Jesus that you tried to kill is alive, and we're with his witnesses. The Holy Spirit makes all the difference in our lives. Thank you, Lord. One of the things that Robbie and I love to do, and one of the, one of the, thing, the good things about being in a new area that we've never been to before, is we like to jump in the truck and just go riding and see what we can see. And in the times of doing that, we have found some state, one state park in particular that we love to go to, and it's not very far from here. Um, <laughs> there's not much south of us, but water. But there's a state park that we like to go to, and uh, there's a beach that we like to go to. The beach is about three hours away, but the state park that we like to go to, that we like to swim at, is only about a little over an hour, about an hour, 20 minutes drive. And we've, we've gone there several times, but when I sang this song tonight, I got this visual picture in the chorus that it says, the river of God fills our mouth with laughter. We rejoice for the river is here. The last time we went, we about had the park to ourselves. It was during the week, it was a weekday. We like it that way. <laughs> But it was so hot, and the sand was so hot on our feet. The sand in front, that they have covered picnic areas. They're first come, first serve, and then those that don't get to pick those have to have their picnic tables out in the sun. But we, were, we had the whole, basically the whole park to ourselves. So we had a covered picnic area, but the covered picnic area is probably 35 maybe 45 yards that's how big the beach is beach area where we were at and that sand was hot even with sandals you could feel the heat from the sand and putting your feet in that water when you finally get to the water was so refreshing well it's kind of difficult for us because we have physical challenges that we're still battling with but God's working with us through that, and there's facts, and the facts are, you know, you have to deal with the aches and pains of age and other issues, but the truth is we're healed, because that's part of our covenant. But just getting to that water after being so parched and so hot, getting to that water is so refreshing, so I had a vivid picture in my mind and a memory of what we experienced a couple of weeks ago of being so hot and so dry and when it get, when you get to that water how refreshing it is and that's just like when we get into the river of God it'll set your feet to dancing it'll make you start laughing 
it'll fill your heart with cheer because it's so refreshing. Nature preaches the gospel if we'll just listen. If we'll just be still and listen. Nobody can say they've never heard the gospel because the, the, the na- nature that God made for us preaches that to us. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. He wants to be our friend. He wants to be our master. And He wants to lead us and guide us and direct us if we'll just stop and listen, spend time in his presence, learn to listen for his voice. He'll never, he'll never lead us astray, ever. He loves us. He loves you. So whenever you go to the beach this summer, just think. The water represents the Holy Spirit and how refreshing it is to our spirits if we let it.
anybody's agenda, man, or anybody else's, Lord. God, all we need is your presence. All we need is your river. Streams of refreshing to bring life where there seems to be nothing but death. Life! Yes. Life and life more abundantly, Jesus. That's what you promised to give us. For those listening, God, I just speak life. In Jesus' name, life. Holy Spirit, let him feel his presence. You know, there's a lot of things that we're being challenged with. We've been We've tried to be as open and honest with everyone as we could possibly be. And um, I have gotten to the point that my vision has been so challenged. And since January, since I had the, the issues with the stroke, my vision has gotten to the point that I don't like going into grocery stores because, or any store for that matter, because I can't see, I can, well, I can't focus on what's on the shelves and, and read what's what's on the boxes or the cans or the whatever, whatever it is on the, on the shelves. So, <laughs> Robbie doesn't mind it, so I go and I go in the store and I get a scooter and I take it out to him and he goes in the store and goes grocery shopping and then we come home and put the groceries up and that's been our routine now for quite a while because I'm to the point visually that it's just challenging and we went to the eye doctor today because I got to the point and my children were like mom you need to go get this checked out and you know when you're believing God for healing, it, it kind of seems like you're speaking out of both sides of your mouth when you actually resort to go into the doctor because you know, you know, I'm believing God for healing, but yet you go to the doctor. You know, it seems like an oxymoron, but today I went to the to the eye doctor and I called around and called around and called around I probably called 15, 14, 15 different offices slash clinics and got turned down but the one that we went to when we were in Texas 
they actually have sister companies, brother companies, whatever you want to call them. And I called one today, and um, they were able to get me in. They did the, the eye appointment. And the doctor was kind of puzzled when they looked at my previous prescription as to what the prescription is now. And it's severely different. And I, I explained to the doctor, I said, well, since I saw the doctor last time, this is what I've gone through. And I talked about the, the stroke and described it and all this kind of stuff. And I said, it's severely affected my eyes. And, and the doctor said, oh, well, that all makes sense. And she said, actually, your left eye, because I, I, I'm nearsighted in one eye, farsighted in the other eye, I also have stigmatism, and I also have stage one or level one, whatever they call it, cataracts. So my eyes can't, the, the cones and rods in my eyes can't expand and contract like they're supposed to to maintain normal vision. But the doctor told me, he said, she said, actually your left eye, as far as the cataracts are concerned, your left eye has improved. Because I was afraid that they were gonna start talking about having to have an eye surgery um, because of the cataracts and stuff. And she said, no, it, it has to get between this, this grade and this grade or level or whatever that they go by. And she said, you're not there yet, so we're not gonna have to do surgery. And the prescription will correct what I'm experiencing right now. So when I get the, the, the new prescription on my glasses, I'll be able to drive. I'll be able to be independent again. I won't have to depend on my husband to take me everywhere I want to go. Because uh, we have a brand new vehicle and I haven't got to drive it yet because I haven't been able to see. So I'll be able to drive our vehicle and I'll be able to go and do things and, and grocery shopping will not be such a chore to me anymore because I'll be able to see what I'm shopping for. So I just wanted to give God praise that, yes, I did go to a doctor, but I'm learning in my walk with him that sometimes, you know, we don't, we expect God to do things certain ways and we put him in a box and God is so big that box will not hold him and it, it just explodes. Um, we're in the church that we're in right now. We're so excited because we're learning new things that, and we've been in church all of our lives, but we're learning new things in the word that have been there all along. We're just learning how to look at them and look and explore these with new glasses, new <laughs> glasses, yeah. new vision, new, new concepts, new, new awareness, new revelations. And it's the, 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 the Bible's just opening up and it's becoming a new book to us. And we're both so excited. And we keep saying, God, what are you doing? Um, we, we just sense that there's something, there's something about to, to take place. And God's up to, an, up to a new thing. And we just have to depend on him, learn and trust in him, and hold on to his hand. And he's going to lead us and guide us. And he's not going to fail us. He's not going to lead us down paths that we don't need to go down. And it's, it's fun and exciting. So I, I encourage you. To, to learn to think outside the box and the, the ways that we expect God to do things and he does them different. But as, as long as it doesn't compromise the word of God, go for it. Because you, you never know what, <laughs> you never know what God's going to do. Because God is a big, big, big God. God is not a creation. He's not equal to the the, the the Satan is not equal to God just on the other side. Satan was created. Satan was a created being. God was not. There's no there's no equal to God. And God is my daddy. God takes care of me. God takes care of us. He doesn't do it the way we expect him to. But he sees things that we don't. So, God's pretty awesome. He's wonderful. Oh, how wonderful Your love for me Oh, how beautiful Your, your grace unending My heart cries for you, Jesus my heart cries out, 
I will ever sing your praises. I will ever sing. Heaven, come into this moment. Only in your presence, wasted hearts will come alive. Whisper love that words can't fathom. Break these walls of silence. You are singing all my life. Oh, how wonderful your love for me. Oh, how beautiful. Your grace and ending. My heart cries for you, Jesus, and my heart cries out. I will ever sing your praises. I will ever sing. Mercy found me in my failings. Take these shattered pieces, mend them in your death-scarred hands. Freedom paid with arms wide open, all my sins forgiven. I am yours forevermore. Oh, how wonderful your love for me. Oh, how beautiful. Your grace unending, my heart cries for you, Jesus, and my heart cries out. I will ever sing your praises, I will ever sing. me. Oh, how beautiful, your grace unending. My heart cries for you, Jesus, and my heart cries out. I will ever sing your praises. I will ever sing. Lord, we sing your praise tonight. More than anything, God, I ask that you manifest your presence. Here I am waiting. Abide in me, I pray. Here I am longing for you. Hide me in your love, bring me to my knees. May I know Jesus more and more. Come live in me, all my an old song, sing it with me. Here I am waiting. Here I am waiting. Abide in me, I pray. Here I am longing for you. Hide me in your love, bring me to my knees. May I know Jesus more and more. 
come live in me all my life take over come breathe in me I will rise on eagles wings come live in me all my Beautiful Savior, Lord, I love to feel your touch. You never forsake me, Lord, you're always there. Each passing moment, it's you that I adore. I love you, Jesus, more and more. Come live in me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me. I will Have you ever read Psalm 103? I love Psalm 103. I don't know if I can quote it one way or not. I'll try. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all my sins, who heals all, I mean, forgives all my iniquities, who heals all my diseases, who redeems my life from the pit, who satisfies me with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. And I may have got those out of order, but it, it's all in there. <laughs> and crowns me with glory and honor. God wants to renew our youth. God wants to, he's already paid for everything. He wants to give us life and life more abundantly. Where you're weak, he's strong. Where you're poor, he's rich. Sometimes there's a fine line between, as some put it, seeking the hand of God and seeking the face of God. God has a lot of things in his hand. He's got goodness. The word says he's good all the time. No, that's not an exact scripture. But what is an exact scripture? It talks about his goodness in James. It says he doesn't change. He's not like a shifting shadow. God is good all the time. And he's got good plans for our life. And you might think like I have. Well, that's fine and good, but Lord, I messed him up somewhere along the way and I don't know what's left now. Maybe you've never thought that, but I have. You know, that's a lie. If you're alive and you're still breathing, all you got to do is say, Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, show me your love. Show me your love fresh and anew. Stir my heart again.
And like the old hymn says, something about stirring the slumbering chords again. As he just begins to play on those chords and breathe life back into your soul where there was no life minutes before. There was death. And you know it. And you felt it. But Jesus didn't come to bring death. He came to bring life. And if we turn to him and we believe his word, he can breathe life again. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you've been told. Or how many times you've been hurt or how you've struggled with unforgiveness. Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. When the prodigal son wasted all of his money, went and did what he thought would bring him happiness and only found himself in misery and broke. And he came crawling back to his daddy, hoping that he could just get a job and at least eat again. He never expected anything else. He was just hoping that his daddy would just at least just give him a job so he could eat and have a place to stay. But his daddy was looking for him. And he put a ring on his finger and a robe on his back. A ring represents authority. A robe represents righteousness. His father said to him, I forgive you. Not only do I forgive you, but I'm restoring you as a son. No, it doesn't say that in so many words, but that's what, that's what he was doing. That's what the ring and the robe were about. And then he killed the fatted calf and threw a celebration. Where are you at today? What have you done? It doesn't matter. You say, God, I've sinned. I blew it. I've lost my peace. I've lost my joy. Where are you? He wants to answer that prayer and say, I'm right here. I'm waiting for you. Waiting. Just come into his presence. You wow. know, when, when David and his mighty men of valor fought a battle and they came back to camp only to find all of their possessions were gone. Their wives, their children, their livestock. Everything they owned was gone. Even David's own men that were fighting with him turned against him and started saying things that I'm sure David was a man. I'm sure it hurt his heart. You expect you expect accusations and hardships and accusations to come from the world because that's just the world. But when your own brothers and sisters come against you, and I don't, there's somebody out there I'm talking to, I don't know who, but God does. When your own brothers and sisters come against you, that's hard. You expect it from the world, but you don't expect it from your brothers and sisters that you rub elbows with. And you're fighting against the kingdom of darkness with. Those, those are the ones that hurt. And I'm going to read Psalm 103 so that we can be sure and get it right. <laughs> okay. It says, I'm going to read the, the first five verses. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my innermost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. I'm going to pause right there because I was reminded of a story that happened to Robbie and I about five or six years ago. I was studying and trying to, to further my nursing education. So I was sitting at the table in the kitchen in the dining room studying and he was sitting on the couch and he was reading the word studying his his I think he was 
uh, taking some Greek Greek and Hebrew classes at the time, or just Hebrew. But anyway, he was studying. I was studying. He was also cooking meatballs in the oven. He had bought a pan that was like a 9 by 13 pan that had holes in the top that grease would drip down in so that whatever you were cooking on the top, like a meatloaf or whatever, it wasn't a meatloaf pan, but it was that same type thing where you put food, beef, meat, whatever, on the top, and it had the handles, but yet there was handles underneath as well. So when you pulled it out to pull the grease and everything, the whole the entire thing out, although it was in two pieces, you had the handles. Well, I had not cooked with that before because he had gone out and bought that specifically for what he was doing. He was cooking meatballs in the baking meatballs in the oven and getting as much grease as possible out so that we could have lots of protein. Okay, so that's the scenario. I'm sitting at the table. I'm reading. I'm studying. He's sitting at the, on the couch. He's reading. He's studying. The timer goes off on the stove. And he, he asked me, he said, Honey, will you go um, turn the meatballs over? Sure. I get up. I go in there. And I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts. Not pants. Shorts. And I open up the oven door. And I grab the handles. And I pull toward me. Not grabbing the handles underneath but just the ones on top when i pulled it out the other came with it but it the grease part of it hit the the door of the oven because i didn't have a hold of those handles all i had was meatballs and shorts i pull it toward me that pan of full of grease hits the oven door and splashes up and all i had time to do was scream jesus that's the only thing that came out of my mouth was jesus all of that grease hot grease from out of the oven coated from my stomach to my feet and when it was going down my legs i looked down expecting to see blisters and bubbles because I have no idea what temperature the oven was at, but I'm sure it was at least 375, 400 degrees. My friend, that will cook your skin. (laughs) All I had time to do was scream, Jesus. And do you know that grease felt like lotion going down my legs, and there was not not even a pink spot on my skin. And I just stood there, and I was still holding the meatball pan. Meatballs had gone everywhere. Grease was everywhere. It, <laughs> my kitchen looked <laughs> like meatballs had exploded. Well, kind of it did. But the grease was flowing down my legs and off of my shirt, off of my shorts, dripping onto my skin, and grease from the pan that had gone on my skin flowing down. Didn't even get pink. No pain, no nothing. He runs in there because he knows exactly what just happened. He runs in there expecting to see, I'm going to have to take my wife to the hospital because she just burned herself real bad. (laughs) I put the meatballs on top of the stove, handle and all, put it up on top of the stove. And I said, well, I guess I need to go take a bath and get all this grease off my legs. And the look of shock on his face and I said I'm not hurting or burning at all and I went and took a bath cleaned myself up while he cleaned the kitchen and then I still had to come behind him because there was so much it was it was everywhere everywhere and it took quite a while to clean that kitchen up but not one pink spot on my bare skin from that 375 whatever the the degree was grease on my skin all I had time to do was scream the name of Jesus and you know what he prevented me from a tragedy that could have permanently scarred my life my daddy kept me from getting burned that's one of my 
benefits and forget not all his benefits. Okay, close parentheses. <laughs> Who forgives all of my sins? Who heals all of my diseases? He heals my high blood pressure. He heals my uh, cataracts. He heals my eye issues. He heals the the problem that the, the stroke left. He heals all diseases. And if you look up that word in Hebrew, if you look up that word in whatever language, all means all. He heals all my diseases. He redeems my life from the pit. He crowns me with love and compassion. He satisfies my desires with good things. And I like this part. So that my youth is renewed like an eagle. I'm going to be young for a long time because eagles don't age very, very rapidly. Those are the benefits that my daddy gives me and your daddy gives you. Don't let the enemy steal from you. You stand up for what the Word of God says and you sink your teeth into that and you don't let go because he'll try to he'll try to take things away from you but if it's in the word of god if god has promised it to us it's ours it's ours by covenant that that's psalm 103 and isaiah 53 we've heard that so many times when jesus was beaten and wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed Jesus took our sickness and our infirmities on him and nailed it to the tree and he said it is finished I don't have to have high blood pressure I don't have to have eye problems I don't have to have the sicknesses and the diseases that my body battles with. That's the truth. Facts might be the signs and symptoms thereof, but the truth is I'm healed. I'm still walking the path of how do I receive the manifestation that already belongs to me, but I'm not going to stop fighting for it. And I'm not going to stop believing for it until I receive what's rightfully mine by covenant with my Father. And that we have to, but the Bible says the uh, something about the, the kingdom of God is violence and the violent take it by force. I, I don't know how to... The quote, kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Yes, and, and the, the violent, violent take, take it, it by, by force. force. We have to stand up against the enemy... Or he'll run all over us because he knows the word of God too. He does. He can quote it. But we have the upper hand. We have the victory. Covenant is ours. We need to fight for it. And I'm preaching too long again. (laughs) Do your hand. I commit again all I am for you, Lord. You hold my world in the palm of your hands, and I am yours forever. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I see, with all I am. Show us, Lord. We commit ourselves to you, God. I will walk with you. 
Wherever you go, the tears and joy, I'll trust in you. And I will live in all of your ways and your promises forever. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I sing with all I am. I will worship. I will worship you. 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 Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. The reason that I live, the reason that I sing with all I have. that we serve. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father, you are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise, you are awesome in this place, mighty God, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. As they come into your presence, Past the gates of grace Into your sanctuary Lord, I want to see your face I look upon your countenance I see the fullness of your grace I can only bow down And say You are awesome in this place Mighty God, you are awesome in this place, Abba Father, you are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise, you are awesome in this place, Mighty God, you are awesome in place, mighty God, you are awesome in this place, I'm a father, you are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise, you are awesome in this place, mighty God, you are awesome in 
awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise. You are awesome in You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. As we get ready to close, I just want to say this. If you're not in a local body wherever you live, and one that really you can reach out to when you're hurting or when you're going through something bad and minister to you and pray for you. No condemnation, but let me encourage you to get there. Because the truth is, God never made any of us to, to be able to survive, to be able to make it ourselves. Yes, he's all sufficient, but it says he's given to the body pastors and teachers and preachers and it also says that he's given gifts like in 1 Corinthians 12 and in Romans 12 a different kind of gifts and no matter who you are or what anointing you have on your life you don't have all the gifts none of us do and you're going to go through dry times and I have been and in those times you need somebody to sit down and say help me pray for me I'm thankful to say that I've got those people in our church. And I feel them. If any of those people are listening, thank you for praying for us. God is our strength. God is your strength. But we need each other. We need the body of Christ. Find you a body that you can belong to not just so you can say you went to church, but one that where you can really be ministered to and one hear that the word. where you're hurting, you can feel arms around you and they look at you and say, I love you. And they're God's hand extended to you and you can feel the love of God through them. That's what we need. Lord, I pray for everyone listening tonight that we'll listen later. Lord, if they're your children, I pray that you would lead them to a place where they can let their gifts flow and with a right heart and an attitude minister to others and let others minister to them. So that, like it said in Ephesians, so that that which every joint supplies can nourish the whole body so that we can all be mature and healthy. Thank you for your body. Thank you for pastors. Thank you for teachers. Thank you for evangelists. And all the rest of them that I'm leaving out. Just thank you for all the gifts you've given us. And thank you most for your love and for times of refreshing God. And I pray that everyone tonight would just feel your presence, not because of my plan or Debbie's or our singing, but because you're anointing in your presence. Because it's by the anointing that the yokes are broken. It's not by my, my talents. My talents can't break anything. They might impress somebody, but they won't break anything. But the anointing, the anointing of God breaks the yoke. And I pray that every yoke of bondage that's in your life tonight would be broken. And I speak death to everything that's not of God that's come against you. In life and peace. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. And for all those that have joined us. In Jesus' name.
That didn't go exactly where I planned. <laughs> but I pray that you were encouraged tonight, not condemned. If you felt low, if you've been weak, believe me, I've been there, and I've been there lately. But because of the body and because of others that are praying for us, I feel the power of God. I feel the peace of God. All of our problems aren't solved. Circumstances had not changed a lot. But his peace makes all the difference. And he can make all the difference in your life too. And by the way, whenever you're listening, if you have prayer requests or prayer needs that you want us to stand with you with, text them. They're in the, in the chat line. Text your needs. Te uh, text your request so that we'll know how to reach out to you and stand with you and pray for you. And let us be a body minister into a body. That's very, very important. Text your needs to us. In Jesus' name, Lord bless you. May his peace guide you. May the, the joy of the Lord be your strength again. And if you've lost that joy, just spend some time in his presence and ask him to baptize you. Baptize just means to immerse, if you look it up. Immerse you in his joy. Because joy didn't come from you. It didn't come from watching a funny TV show. It can well up from within, from the spirit within. It brings life and gives joy. We'll see you next week. God bless.